You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, money maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Professor Robert Oman, who was born in Germany. He fled uh, Nazi persecution when he was about eight years old and ended up in the United States with his family. Uh, in the process, his parents basically lost everything, but s strive to give their two children both a, an excellent Jewish and general education. And he's joining us here today to talk to us about some of the work he's done that uh, also led to his winning the 2005 Nobel Prize in Economics. Professor, it's an honor to have you with us. Well, good evening, good evening. Um, you're probably best known for the work you've done on conflict and cooperation through game theory analysis. Before we maybe get into that, could you just describe a little bit what game theory is all about? Yes, I'd be glad to. Uh, game theory is about uh, the strategic analysis of situations uh, which, uh, in, in which uh, different entities are involved, uh, interact with each other, uh, but they're striving to different goals. Now, those goals uh, may be diametrically opposed, like uh, in a game like chess, but usually they're not diametrically opposed in more important situations than games like chess. Uh, for example, in commercial enterprises, uh, in, in a... Um, in a commercial transaction when somebody is uh, buying something from somebody else and the buyer is interested in getting as low a price as possible, the seller is, getting as high, is interested in getting a high, as high a price as possible. So they're striving for different goals. But those goals are not diametrically opposed because both sides are usually interested in the transaction being consummated. So uh, a game theory is about that kind of situation where two or more people, or two or more entities, I should say, are interacting with each other but are striving to different goals. The reason that it's called game theory is that, um, is that the, the most, uh, is, so to speak, stark and obvious and, and clean uh, example of such situations are real games, okay? They could be games like uh, chess in which, as I said, the interests are diametrically opposed, but they also could be games like poker in which more than two people are involved. And, of course, you can't have more than two uh, things being uh, uh, diametrically opposed. Um, so uh, uh, th that is uh, what game theory is about, and it has applications to many different um, areas of uh, life, uh, like uh, economics. Ah, so economics uh, is, a, is a good topic for us. Yeah, e economics and, and, and politics, international relations, war and peace, um, uh, law, in which there's often uh, players, you have the plaintiff and, and the defendant, uh, and you also have the judge is also a player in this game. Uh, even biology, in which you have uh, uh, living uh, species that compete with each other for the resources that nature has to offer. So uh, it, it has a very broad range of applications, and if uh, economics interests you uh, uh, especially, uh, let's talk about economics. All right. Well... Because we're on the, on the Goldstein on Gelt show, the, the, uh, the show's really an investment show. We try to talk about financial planning issues. My day job is that I'm a financial advisor here in Jerusalem, uh, so I only get this once a week gig when I get to talk to people on the radio. But uh, the, the concept of game theory, I think, is very important when people are doing financial planning because they need to develop a long-term strategy for how they will, let's say, have enough money to retire. And they're dealing with so many other obstacles, like you said, not which are necessarily diametrically opposed. But can normal people use game theory to to come up with uh, practical decisions? Well, um, actually, uh, game theory is more about situations in which people are... Um, 
there are several entities involved in the situation, and they're playing strategically vis-a-vis -vis each other. Uh, the kind of situation, certainly game theory has a lot of very, very practical applications. But if you're talking about um, uh, looking at your financial options and, uh, and uh, uh, see, asking yourself where's the best place to put your money, uh, that is not uh, explicitly a game theoretic problem, okay? Because in game theory, you have to have at least, at, sorry, at least two entities that are uh, striving to different goals. And when you, uh, when, when you are looking at your financial options, you don't have two entities. You have just one. You have just the person who wants to put his money in the best possible place. That is what we call a decision problem, but that's not really game theory. Besides, I want to warn you um, that uh, I am not an expert in finance. That is not uh, my special area of expertise. I realize that there are decisions to be made over there, and I myself have to make decisions of, of that kind. And sometimes they're very, very complex, very complex. Uh, for example, the... the um, the pension fund uh, that I am in, I, I was unable to get explanations, although I tried for half a year. I was unable to get explanations of what really is going on, what really the options are uh, from the, um, uh, the people that served me in this uh, pension fund on the telephone. Mm -hmm. I repeatedly asked these people several questions. They were unable to give me answers. I asked for their their uh, supervisors, the supervisors were also unable to give me answers. Some of these financial instruments are extremely complicated to that extent that uh, the the consumer um, doesn't doesn't really know what's going on. Yes, and and you know, I, I although it's not my area of expertise, I I do have a little bit of mathematical training and and economic training, and, and I know what an interest rate is, and I know what an annuity is, uh, but I was unable to get satisfactory answers. So I think, I think sometimes these um, the financial institutions uh, and pension funds and, and uh, places like that, uh, they, they, the, the people up there who do the planning, uh, uh, they, they want to give the uh, consumer as many choices as possible but uh, they miss the mark because they, they make their plans so complicated that uh, nobody, even in their organization, can understand it. And when you can't understand it, uh, you know, it's, it's useless. Yes. That's, that's so uh, so uh, I, I think... Uh, um, no, it's a real problem I, what you're describing. Uh, let me just uh, reintroduce. We are talking to Professor Robert Oman, who won the 2005 Nobel Prize in Economics and is noting... On, on the show here, a real difficulty that in practical economics, simply getting the information that you need in order to to make a wise uh, financial decision is difficult. It's not a, it's not an economics question anymore. It's just a practical question, I guess, of the service you're getting. It's a practical question, but it, I think it has policy implications, and that policy implication is what we call kiss, and kiss means keep it simple. Okay. Keep it simple, because if you don't keep it simple, people won't understand it, and they won't be able to make a, an appropriate decision. You know, in the end, I threw up my hands, and I just made an arbitrary decision. I, I, just, yeah, I had to decide something, and since nobody could explain to me, I just made an arbitrary decision, uh, and, and uh, I'm, I'm doing not badly. But, you know, I, maybe I could be doing better. And the people up there, the bosses, they think that they make very complicated uh, 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 plans, uh, uh, products, financial products available. They think that they're doing people a favor, but actually they're not. Now, I have to be careful because if you make a living from financial transactions, if you're a broker there in Wall Street or if, you're, uh, if you work for some kind of hedge fund 
or something like that, or if you're in fact an investor who spends 40 hours or 50 or 60 hours a week thinking about his investments, and there are people like that, then you will understand these products, okay? Yeah, you will understand that, but most of us are not like that. Most of us have our work to do, and if we're retired, we have our, our, uh, um, uh, we, we have our uh, families or, or our, uh, our uh, uh, travel or whatever it is that we do after retirement to see to, and we don't spend all our time thinking about financial instruments. So uh, I think there's a real problem there which has to be fixed. Yeah, it is an issue. I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things I've found when I do financial plans for people is I ask them, well, you have a pension plan. H how much will you get when you retire? And they say, well, I have no idea. And then I say, and what if you die? Does your wife get a piece of it? And he says, well, I have no idea. I said, well, why don't you go ask the, the, the pension company? And they say, well, they give me all these answers and these forms. So we, I, I put together a few years ago a, a simple questionnaire to ask those questions. How much will I get? What? What's, what's the tax that, on That's precisely the, right, yeah. And, 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 and you ask them about interest rates, and the point is the lower down people, they don't really understand anything, yeah? Mm -hmm. They understand much less than me or, 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 or uh, other people in there. You talk to them about interest rate and the, the, the real interest rate and, and uh, uh, something a little more complex, and they don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, you know, we've diverged off the subject. I'm, I'm so happy to be talking to Nobel Prize winner Professor Robert Oman about, uh, about game theory. It turned out we, we digressed a little bit into some practical financial issues. But let me just ask you the last question before we run out of time, is that uh, you've apparently used some game theory to solve certain Talmudic problems in the Gemara, in the Talmud. How does that work? Well, I'll tell you the story. Uh, uh, there was a passage in the Talmud, or more specifically, uh, yeah, a passage in the Talmud. It's on uh, on Ketubot uh, 93a, um, and uh, it it's something which has ge generated a tremendous amount of ink over uh, the the over thousands of years, and and. Um, it really, uh, they, it, there was great difficulty in understanding this, and and uh, I, uh, my son, who was killed in the in in Lebanon in 1982, um, I, I wrote him a letter once about a certain uh, Talmudic uh, issue, and he wrote, uh, well, go to uh, to Bot 93a. And look over there, and I looked at this passage in the Talmud, and and I couldn't figure it out. And uh, I, and uh, I, together with a colleague of mine, we looked at the numbers over there, and they looked really, really odd. And uh, then we decided to apply some game theoretic uh, tools to try to understand this, and. <clears throat> And eventually, we found one of those tools which really fit the number perfectly. And, and but this 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 didn't satisfy us yet because um, it, it, it's a, a, a sophisticated modern mathematical concept, and it's unlikely that the sages of the Talmud knew about this. And and so we had to get at the bottom of the logic, and this took us a few more months, but finally we did arrive at it. And and and. Um, and uh, this, uh, this, uh, we 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 understood the logic, and this logic, although it is sophisticated, the the sages of the Talmud were very smart people. They were very savvy, very sophisticated. They didn't know modern mathematics, obviously, but uh, they, they but they were smart, sophisticated people, and it's quite possible that the. Um, that the uh, uh, logic that we found behind these numbers really was in the minds of these uh, Talmudic sages. So this was published in the Journal of Economic Theory in 1985 uh, under the uh, title uh, Game Theoretic Analysis of a Bankruptcy Problem from the Talmud. Mm -hmm. So uh, anybody who wants to look up that article which is slightly mathematical, but you know, if you don't understand the mathematics, just skip it because there's a lot of verbal analysis there also, and uh, that that should be uh, that that should be fine. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, that's uh, that's what I have to say about that. 
So I mean, I, what I'm saying really is that the sages of the Talmud were savvy people, and whereas they didn't, uh, they didn't. It's not to be imagined that they worked out uh, a full uh, game theoretic uh, approach, but they did reach the conclusions which were, um, you know, not not at all obvious. So, so uh, I um, I take off my hat to them. <laughs> That's amazing. And I take off my hat to you and to all the work you've done, especially uh, traveling around and speaking and teaching. We've been talking to Professor Robert Oman, uh, who won the Nobel Prize in 2005 and has expertise not only in economics, but also in Talmud. Professor, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you very, very much. And good evening. Bye. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.